edition of Pro Wrestling Show. Now, man, what a bunch of hot news we have for you on the Raw Ring Report. We'll have more coverage on the King of Ring Tournament as the semifinals Trent Also, on the SmackDown Ring Report, we'll have even more on the King of the Ring Finals. But on both shows, what's the most unbelievable, shocking turn of events that you won't believe had happened on both Raw and SmackDown. We'll get to that. And on Hot Topics, the AEW World's Heavyweight Championship is the crown. Chris Jericho's the new champion. But he celebrates. But leave the title stolen? Wow. And Nature Boy Ric Flair threatens to sue WWE over some trademark that you might be familiar with as all new pro wrestling show starts right now. Welcome again to the Pro Wrestling Show. I'm your host, always, Kenny Dix here. Glad you can join us here on the Pro Wrestling Show here. Thank you all for watching the Pro Wrestling Show this week. Let's get to business. But first things first, join in the conversation using the hashtag Pro Wrestling here on Connect. Hey, we appreciate you. We love what you do. Subscribe. So subscribe right now. If you love Pro Wrestling content, we appreciate you for doing so. And we thank you all and we keep on doing what we're doing for you, the audience out there. So tell a friend, call a friend, share the video you like, just hit that subscribe button and we appreciate you for your kindness. All right, let's get to the Raw Ring Report. On the Raw Ring Report this week, Raw kicked off with the Universal Championship contract signing between champion Seth Rollins and challenger Braun Strowman with Mike Cole monitoring. Well, both guys were playing in the fence about, you know, they have pulled double duty as they had to defend their tag team titles against Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. But then at the end of the night, they had to come together and fight for the Universal Championship, which self saying that he wanted to give Braun a, a title shot. Braun was like, thought he was being looked over and then it just escalated. And then next thing you know, the OC, AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson approached the ring, and they wanted to see hands first on why AJ was not number one contender. And talking about you, all you do in championships now, you get a gambler. Like you was talking about his title belt. AJ Styles said, "That's how you get championship matches and stuff. You got to look at somebody's belt to just say, I want a title shot.' So um, the brawl escalated." Things had spewed, and next thing you know, after the commercial was an impromptu tag team match between Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman, the Raw Tag Team Champions, against in a non-title match against the club, Allison Gallo. Back and forth match was high heaven pace with Braun showing his strength, showing his um his feet, and Seth Rollins showing his um technical. His speed, his quickness, and stuff like that. Um, match ended in a no disqualification after the number one contenders for the tag team championship, Ziggler and Rude, came out there and joined forces with the LC Club to do a major beatdown to Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman, leaving both men laid out, sending a message that come class champions, they want to be the new Raw tag team champions. No way, no question about it. So we got something going on with that where they're trying to build Rude and Ziggler up as a mechanic tag team. And now they're getting built up to become the, the strong tag team, which it's, it was an impromptu tag team. They never teamed before. But Rude had more chemistry with James Storm way back when in um the Impact days. And Dolph Ziggler, he just had chemistry with everybody you put him with. So I think this is just the glue that mesh. It meshes together. So um, look out for that. Speaking of that, Sandra Alexander was doing an interview about his shoulder, his leg, I meant to say his leg. And um, he gets attacked by AJ Styles. Thus, I'm assuming that AJ is going to defend his U.S. title against Sandra Alexander. 
at Clash of Champions, send them them up a match. And uh, it was for no apparent reason. So, hey, this is what it is. Also, the number one contenders for the Raw Tag Team Championship, Robert Rude and Dolph Ziggler continue their winning ways against WWE former tag team champion Zach Ryan Kohoffers, who hosts the show Figure Out on the WWE web series on his YouTube channel. And um, they put clean work to the former tag team champions, sending a message to that Rollins and Strowman that they are looking to become the next Raw tag team champions by any means necessary. So, hey. Also, the sassy Sudden Bell, Lacey Evans, returns to Monday Night Raw. And she was trying to come out there to Natalia interrupted her and attacked her and the fight the fight began and you know typical Natalia, typical Lacey Evans fight, you know, back and forth, doing suplexes and doing elbow strikes. But at the end, the Sassy Sun Bell used the woman's right to win the match to pick up the win. And the Sassy Sun Bell looks to rebuild her career up trajectory after um that this past summer, she was in Brawl in a few this past spring, I mean, say, the summer leads to summer with Becky Lynch, and they kind of jab, jab, delegated her down and stuff. She hadn't been wrong for about almost till what, to the end of the um, screen was picking you. Right. Okay. Speaking of that, um, Lacey Evans, um, foe, enemy, the Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, Came out, and made a statement, and she wanted she wanted to call out Sasha Banks and demand answers to why Sasha's recent attacks on her lately. And Sasha Banks came out there and said that she she doesn't do anything for her. And you know, Sasha Banks made that rant about she's doing this for the money, she's doing this for for attention, she's doing this to get relevance back into the women's division and how a way to do so by attacking the top dog in the WWE women's division right now is Becky Lynch. So um Sasha uh, Sasha put that out there, Becky Lynch put it out there that they want to fight each other and they're gonna fight each other at Clash of Champions where the one of the founding members of the women's revol- evolution, Sasha Banks against Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's title at Clash of Champions in Charlotte. So that's going to be a match that everybody built up to see and wanted to see. Never thought we was going to see, but we're going to see at Clash of Champions in this match. But um, speaking of that, Becky Lynch will have competition later on in the show. She team of SmackDown Women's Champion, Bailey, to take on WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, Alexa Bliss and Nick Cross. We'll have that later on the show on what happened with that. Speaking of that, the King of the Ring tournament continues as the semifinals Continue. I mean, the you know, semifinals continue. Yeah, the semifinals continue as it was Cedric Alexander working an injury against Baron Corbin. So Baron Corbin targeting the injury, targeting Cedric's knee. He targeted, targeted, targeted. Great strategy by Baron. Baron Use the end of days to get the win and advances on to the King of the Ring tournament. And could we be seeing King Baron Corbin in the future? In the future, we could. We just have to continue on watching. That's what I think. That's going to be my pick. Speaking of that, King of the Ring tournament continues in the second round as Shamoa Joe battles Ricochet. Well, match was that Ricochet was a high spot. Shamoa Joe with the ground game, pounding ground. Continue on the ground as much as he can. But at the end of the match, both men went up to the top of the turnbuckle, did a back suplex, and pit each other. The referee made the count. And then the referee went to, referee John Cone went to the um, voice box and asked about the call, the direction of the match. And they had to make a ruling and Ricochet and Small Joe Plunder and one of them was like, what's going on? Why, why is there not a ruling on this match? Who's, who's the decisive winner? Referee couldn't make a uh, decision. But at the but during the um, break, the referee was about to make a decision. To Barry Corbin came in and said that he won the dog going to get by. But the referee informed Barry Corbin that since Small Joe and Ricochet pinned each other and it was a decisive call 
that both men automatically enter. So it's going to be a triple threat match next week where it's going to be Baron Corbin versus Ricochet versus Small Joe. Winner wins the Raw side of the King of the Ring and will meet the SmackDown side of the King of the Ring at Class of Champion. So this is going to be a high impactful match this week, triple threat match between Corbin, Ricochet, and Joe. It's big, a lot of uh, high spots, high flying, ground and pound, and um, you know, big boots. Boom, <laughs> very cool, like dude. All right, British, um, number one, Rey Mysterio get in here. He realized that he ain't done yet. He still got not left in the game, thanks to his son Dominic. And Rey Mysterio wants to show the world that he can do. He, impossible. he wants to leave a mark, and Rey Mysterio has left an incredible mark. Almost been in WWE since 2002. That's almost 18 years. So Rey Mysterio deserves the credit, and uh, Rey Mysterio is that. He is the um, little big man in a you know big man sh- in a shoes. You know he proved he earned that money for Rey Mysterio and team on wrestling. So good for Rey. All right. For the first, also the Miz went against Cesaro. Well, you no know, typical Miz going against Cesaro. Miz is no more contender for the Intercontinental Championship. So this was kind of like a workout match for Miz to gain some speed, gain some momentum, gain some traction into his match against Shisuke Nakamura, SmackDown Shisuke Nakamura, a class of champions. But he did so against Cesaro. Cesaro known as a ground and pounder and so I made some news too about being in NST, NST UK lately and, um, you know, pressing the fools with that. I don't see why they ain't making Cesaro a star. So, like, if, if, you know, Cesaro's big and stuff, but well, if you want to bring, you, you experiment with bringing him over there in NST UK to see if he can become a champion? Who knows? If they do bring him over there, I'll be watching NXT UK. I haven't been watching this too, too NXT UK as like lately. So hey, if you, you know, like, <laughs> if Cesaro go out there, I'll be watching more. So um, hey, you know, follow your superstars, whoever your favorite wrestlers are. So I guess Cesaro's a good in ring talent from a crew standpoint, the strongest man in WWE. He got um, defeated by the Miz. So Miz gaining some momentum, came the class of champion. Also, um, for the very first time ever, the women's WWE Women's Championship Showcase match between Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch, SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley, and against the WWE Women's Tag Team Champion Alexa Bliss and Nick Kroc. Back and forth matches with Galore. You know, Bayley hit her move on Alexa and Nikki. She's been feuding with Alexa and Nikki lately. Um, she's trying to continue that momentum so she can go to Charlotte because Bailey has something to prove that she believes that Charlotte is undermining her and not taking her seriously as a competitor and as the SmackDown Women's Champion and as the face of the SmackDown Women's Division. Making Lynch over on to Raw has made her mark as the face of the Raw Women's Division and continue to break ground, continue to break momentum against challenges. Um, Ronda Rouse and Charlotte. Lacey Evans, um, Natalia just keeps on going and going. So, hey, so good match. But then Sasha Banks at the end came out there and trying to distract the the women's bag, um, Becky Lynch. She didn't want, she was trying to see Becky Lynch here. That and all of a sudden, Sasha attacks Becky Lynch and goes out for the chair. And Bailey comes away, comes out trying to prevent Sasha from not doing it. We thought, and then all of a sudden, the most shocking, unbelievable turn of events happened. Bailey grabbed the chair, took the chair from Sasha, and started nailing the chair on Sasha on Becky Lynch, nailed her repeatedly with constant chair shot, and the crowd went crazy. The crowd erupted. Like they ain't seen nothing like that before. I was shocked myself. I said, I did not see this coming. But there were signs in the beginning when the interviewer was asking Bailey, what do you think about Sasha Banks? Did you talk to Sasha Banks about, you know, what she did? And Bailey didn't want to talk about it. And 
I see why she didn't want to talk about it. She was alone with the with the plan already. It's just like the turn of this happened and the chest shots kept on going. And I was like, wow, is Bailey turning heel or what? And it turned out Bailey was kind of like semi heel here at the moment. But we had to find out on the report what had happened then. But hey, well, how it was shocking me. Like, wow. Everybody turned their back on um, Becky Lynch, making Big Lynch the only baby face. Right. You know what it is. All right. That is the Raw Ring Report. Let's move over to the SmackDown Ring Report as we continue with the shocking events that had happened with Bailey shockingly turned on Sasha, on not Sasha, but Becky Lynch and joined forces reunited with her former tag team partner, Sasha Banks. And Bailey had some explaining to do. Bailey said that, you know, hey, Bailey said this on the Spider-Man report. Bailey said that she did this because she felt overshadowed by Becky Lynch because when because the raw women's title has she thinks believe the raw women's title didn't have less significance than Spider-Man women's title. Bailey said, You're mistaken. The raw the Spider-Man women's title has equal importance than the raw women's title. Now, if you don't know, know that, look at WrestleMania. But hey, you know, it just depends on who has the belt. Which, which belt means more and what matches mean like a marketable match. And Sasha and Bailey said that she, don't, 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 don't take her seriously. Don't oversight her. Don't, 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 don't slip up. And Bailey did that. And, um, Charlotte came out there and Charlotte said that, you know, she, and then Charlotte said that she's she she's gonna do it to your face. She's gonna be bold enough, brave enough, bold, brazen enough to do it to your face. She won't be trying to like sneak around doing anything, hitting the gender like Bailey was doing. But she had a point. But hey, Sasha Bank music came out there. Sasha let the world know that she she's still friends with Bailey, and they did a number job on on Charlotte. They tax Charlotte just like they did Becky Lynch on the previous night. <laughs> and they just used the chair on Charlotte. And Charlotte was just there. She, Charlotte got um, taken away. And Bailey and uh, Sasha Banks, this reform alliance, the former women's tag team champions back together again. But for what? But for what? Price. But you know, hey, Bailey wants, Bailey's the Smaden women's champion. So Sh- Sasha wants to be the Raw women's champion. Hey, they couldn't go for the, they was the women's tag team champions and Sasha said it was meaningless. And now Bailey has uh, the blue belt women's gold and Sasha wants the red belt women's gold. So he can finally complete <laughs> the, the prophecy can be complete. So hey, that's something like this. It's, it, yeah, it just keeps you kind of guessing like what's going to happen now. It just keeps on like, wow, the plot thickens and thickens. So hey, there we are. Also, the King of the Ring tournament for the semifinals began on continue on the SmackDown side where Ali went against Elias for the coveted King of the Ring to advance. Next thing you know, back and forth, Elias with his ground game, Ali with his high spot, trying to maneuver everything Elias. But at the end, Elias picks up the win. And he rolls on momentum to the King of the Ring. So Elias on the SmackDown side, getting that momentum. So Elias wants to be the next King of the Ring. Could he be like the King of Rock and Roll? I could, who knows? Hey, possibilities in us. But it was a defeated heartbreak for Ali who gave it his all. I thought they were going to go with Ali. But, you know, things can change in an instant. So things can change. Power to subject. Also, Fire and Desire, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville went against the women's tag team champions, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Also, speaking of that, um, Mandy Cross, Nick, um, not, um, Fire and Desire, Deville and Rose have a YouTube channel and they, they, they eat, they talk about eating donuts or something like that. So, you know, check them out and stuff like that if you can. But match was, you know, match was just that. Um, Ground and pound, but at the end, fire and desire win, 
And would that earn them a match against the Women's Tag Team Championships? There's a possibility that could happen. You know, hey, it could happen in a long shot. So we'll see on that. Also, Randy Orton in the Revival beat down Kofi Kingston again after Randy Orton taunted Kofi Kingston to come out there and Kofi was trying to come out there until the Revival came behind and attacked him and led Randy to do more devious stuff, more diabolical things, and the bashing and stuff like this. Did the RKO into a flip, a flapjack. So, um, I don't know if New Day going to return or what's going to happen. So, Kofi Kingston looking outnumbered as always he do. So, uh, also Chad Gable went against Andrade in the match for the King of the Rings semifinal. But before the match, Selena Vega wanted to let Andrade, um, wanted to let Chad Gable know that he's short and they're doing the short jokes he is. Like Chad Gable doesn't have the height, but hey, Chad Gable has the uh, heart of a champion. And Chad Gable wants to prove himself and stuff like that. But at the end, Chad Gable with a stunning upset over Andrade and he pins Andrade and it's like, Wow, Chad Gable beats Elias next week for the King of the Ring finals on SmackDown side. So who's going to be winning that coming soon? We're going to see on that. I really thought the driver was going to win and face Ali. But I guess SmackDown was like, hey, we don't want to do that no more. We want to go something fresh. We want something new. We want something new innovative. We want something competitive. And um, I guess Chad Gable is that fresh, new, and competitive. So big up to Chad Gable. Speaking of that, Chad Gay was former um, tag team partner and person who used to make Mark Shope jokes about him. And, and Chad Gay defeated him and hit an upset in, for the King of the Ring. Shelton Benjamin went against Aleister Black. Aleister Black countered Shelton Benjamin through Shelton variations of kicks. And Aleister Black used his own variation of kicks, his education, his education flip. And in the gold standard, and now we'll see how this all transpired with um Alistair Black going forward. Speaking of that, the Intercontinental Champion, um Shisuke Nakamura defeated the job. <laughs> Same way like on Raw, where um the in the and then the Viking Raiders defeated a job or two. So like right? this job is here. You gotta have at least one match to be a job a match. So like right? you put somebody look good in the old. Just get one with Sami Zayn's corner and just get Sami Zayn send a message to the Miz that as Flash champions, they're going to, hey, they're going to stay the same. <laughs> Speaking of that, the 24-7 championship was on the line. Well, it went back and forth as Drake Man was the champion and he got pinned by one member of the Bean team. I think both Dallas pinned Drake Man to win the title. <laughs> And Drake Maverick won back the title from Bone. But at the end, our truth will roll up, disguise himself as one of those King of the Ring props and rolled up and hit Drake Maverick to regain the 24-7 championship. This championship is like an ongoing title. You never know what the title will be defended at at any give and any means necessary title. That's what it looks like. And finally, the segment between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns and um, Rowan. Well, you know, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns changed words about, um, Daniel Bryan said, you didn't give me a thing. You know, I was the mastermind. Roman Reigns was frustrated and he speared Daniel Bryan nowhere. That's what he just up to speed. But at the end, Rowan came out there and talked, said he don't need Daniel Bryan. He his own monster. He his own mouthpiece. And I was shocked, like, wow, Rowan gets has something to say? You know, you kind of shocked. And you're like, wow, Rowan got something to say? And Rowan did have something to say, and he said it in more ways than one. So, hey, Rowan attacked on uh, Roman Reigns, told him, hey, I'm going to do the same as you at Clash of Champions. So, hey, that's going to be a match right there we're going to aim to see. And he attacked Daniel Bryan and sent Daniel Bryan to the table. So, wow, Rowan is his own man, and he's going to want to do that at Class of Champions against Daniel, against Roman Reigns to prove that he's 
the face of WWE, and we'll see how they're going to be. All right. That is the SmackDown Ring Report. When we return, we'll have hot topics as the AEW title has been stolen by in an airport. Well, the airport, the airport found the AEW title, I'm going to say. But the champion, Chris Jericho, was whining and dining, and he couldn't watch his own title? What's going on with that? Plus, Ric Flair threatens to sue WWE over a patented trademark that Ric Flair coined that he coined for a long time, but he wants to be pay up. You think WWE going to um, allow that to happen? Well, we'll see about that. And many more as we continue on the Pro Wrestling Show. Stay tuned. I'm your host, always PJ here. Glad you're here. Don't forget to subscribe, tell a friend, call a friend, subscribe, subscribe to the Connect TV YouTube channel as we provide weekly content of the Pro Wrestling Show for you. So thank you all once again for subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. You won't miss a thing. The Pro Wrestling Show every week. We do it for you and we appreciate you. So tell a friend, call a friend, let everybody know. And don't forget, Join in the conversation using the hashtag Pro Wrestling Be on Connect. Whatever. As we get started with hot topics. All right, on hot topics this week, man, a whole list of lindy, you know, weekly, you know, news that we had going on news information. As the AEW World Title was stolen. Now, this report stemmed from when Chris Jericho was returning from the Tallahassee. Um, airport, and he reported the time missing. He had to do a police report, and let's watch this video on how everything broke down. Watch this. Hi, I'm AEW champion Chris Jericho, and unfortunately, less than 24 hours after I became the first AEW champion, with blood streaming down my face after one of the hardest matches I've ever had in my life, some low-life scumbag committed grand larceny and robbed me of the AEW championship. Now, as I sit here in my palatial estate, in my beautiful mansion, getting ready to have a little bit of the bubbly, I'm just imagining what I would do to that son of a bitch if he was here right now. And as a result, I am launching a worldwide investigation using the top private investigators in the world today to find out who committed this crime. And trust me, as the AEW champion, as your Le Champion, I promise to regain and restore and find and reclaim the AEW championship. And once again, give you another reason to finally give me the thank you that I deserve. All right, it's sorry that Chris Jericho issuing a warning to anybody listening that his title was stolen. Well, the Jacksonville police, the not Jacksonville police, the Tallahassee police found the pilot and told Chris Jericho he can retrieve it. And Maru reports that Chris Jericho even, I don't know, rumors reported that they said they found the title nearby a road. What in, what the title doing in a road? Of all places, you don't want to, but hey, it is what it is. But the, the thing is, too, let's see what Chris Jericho had to say once the title had got retrieved. Hi, 
I'm AEW champion Chris Jericho. And less than 24 hours after I launched a worldwide investigation to find my missing championship title, it's been returned to me. And it's not because of any law enforcement agency that was too busy with posting pictures on Twitter and then deleting them and then posting them again, or a funny meme, or a clever gif. It's because of me. It's because I put the fear of God into the hearts of those who robbed me, who committed grand larceny. I told you I hired the best professional private investigators in the world today. And as a result, I got back the most coveted prize in professional wrestling today. The most coveted prize in the world, period. Worth more than Marcellus Wallace's briefcase. More valuable than Han Solo dipped in carbonite. More critically revered than the Ark of the Covenant. The AEW Championship title is back where it belongs. Over the shoulder of the champion. And as I sit in my palatial estate, in my beautiful mansion, drinking a little bit of the bubbly, I once again demand, and rightfully so now more than ever, a thank you from the entire AEW fan base, from the entire AEW roster, backstage, front office, in the ring, all across the board, because I did once again exactly what I told you I was going to do. I got this championship back, and I am never, ever letting it out of my sight again. I'm never going to lose it. I'm never going to be robbed of it. You're going to have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands if you want to take this from Chris Jericho ever again. And that's fine. I'm in no rush as I await for all of you to bow down on your knees and thank me. It's good to be the champion. All right, Chris Jericho, a little bit happy with the bubbly and stuff like that. But um, Chris Jericho, keep up your title. That's your biggest priority, that, that world title. It's just one from becoming the championship from Heyman Pay. He didn't win from Heyman Pay, but it was a match determining the first champion, which was Jericho did so at the All Out Pay View. And then people were saying the All Out Pay View was so so. It wasn't as big as it should have been, but hey, it is what it is. But hey, <laughs> it was a good show. I, I would say that the Cody and Sean Spear match was the highlight for me because seeing Tony Blanchard, Arn Anderson, and all those elements. MJF, you thought he was going to turn on Cody. You thought he was jealous, but Cody prevailed. And speaking of Cody prevailing, he earns himself a tile shot against Chris Jericho. So Cody will go against Chris Jericho at the main event for their all new pay-per-view called Pool Gear in Baltimore, Maryland. So AEW trying to hit the major market. Um, that he was in Baltimore this past week. So AEW going to Baltimore too. So they're trying to pinpoint these markets, like how WCW used to do back in the day. And stuff. Speaking of that, um, Nature Boy Rick Flair threatens to sue WWE over trademark called The Man. Well, the Nature Boy feels like that's his path. He's been saying it since 1981. And TMZ caught up with the Nature Boy with this. A lot of people were like, what is he up to? Like, cause you went at, you, you, you told Becky Lynch and, and you okay, put her on for, notice. Okay, no, and actually I did not. Here's, there's God is my witness. And I feel so bad. I'm glad that I'm having this opportunity to clear there. Um, when I first saw this go down in August of 2018, right. I thought, cool, the man, my gimmick versus my daughter, Charlotte. Right, right, right. Okay, that's the day it started, right after SummerSlam. Right. Um, I thought, cool. So um, I said, I'm going to make some money. It's my trademark. They have it. You've been saying it. Yeah, you've been saying it. No, yeah, I know. I've been saying it since 1981. Yeah. So I sent him a text. I got my worldly statement. I sent him a text. And um, their lawyer who... Just has no respect for me whatsoever, which is something I'm not going to deal with much longer. Um, 
He said, uh, you're wrong, it's not, it's not even close. I said, it's not even close? He said, boom. So then I sent him another text, he didn't respond. So, um, I had my lawyer call. And he blew off my lawyer. This is all in 2018, That's or in right. January of 19. So I go, okay. Uh, so I call, I told Hunter, I said, Hunter, I'm gonna file. I mean, the reason they don't have it, my understanding is the reason they don't have it is because it's too close to mine. So okay, let's say, I've been saying to be the man, which I have trademarked, I wrote a book to be the man, right. and I have, um, you got the shirt on right now. Yeah, yeah, well, this is my, yeah I'm just yeah. doing this stuff, you know, promoting yeah. my own stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so I told Hunter, I said, hey, you know, push come to shove, I'm gonna file for it. I may not get it, but here's the deal. Um, I love Becky Lynch, and no one has supported the women's division more than me as an outsider. As a matter of fact, I've told the guys, that I, and as I would have texted Becky last night, and Sasha, but I'm, I'm sure Becky, I don't know what the WWE spin has been to her. Right. Um, they stole it last night. It's, it's funny, my daughter is so mad at me because I filed not even understanding. It's not with Becky. I have no beef with Becky. But here's the deal. When I almost died two years ago, one person, one person stayed by me the whole time. 31 days and I see you 12 days while I was dying on a respirator and I'm going to take care of her and her family and my family that has taken care of me no matter what. I don't care what the WWE thinks of me personally. I know they love me, right. but obviously they've lost respect for me. If I don't win, and even if I won, Becky can have it all day long. So you, I, I'm you're glad. Letter, you're letter, you're letter yeah, but I want the company the to pay me for it because I'm right. going to take care of my family. I am going to be the man. And if I don't get it, you know what my tombstone will say? He died trying to be the man. All right, you saw right there, Nick Marie Flair saying that he don't care how WWE feels about him. He wants to do this because he feels like WWE owes it to him. He tried to work a deal out with him, and WWE was trying to annoy him, trying to brush him off to the side. And now, Nick Marie Flair wants his confidence and wants some money for say for him, his family, and everyone else. Charlotte feels they saw Rick Flair saying Charlotte is mad with him over the situation. Well, you could be too, but you know, hey, they what Rick Flair doing what is done. Business is business. I understand that, but it's well, why all of a sudden you wants to now sue WWE and WWE been a provider for you. I get that that you want your trademark. Everyone wants to do trademarks now with Megan Thee Stallion doing Hot Girl Summer, LeBron James doing Taco Tuesday, trademarking. But that just for just phrases, catchphrases. But everybody want to patent and stuff like that. Which that's good ownership too. But Ric Flair, you've been you've been you've been saying it from 1981. Why didn't you get a patent in 1981? So can't you wonder like? Okay, dude. Okay, you've been WWE for so long. Okay, it was. And then they said Triple H and Seth Rollins unfollow Ric Flair. So there's that telltale sign. I don't know what it is. And Triple H was a, um, was the admire Ric Flair as a kid and as a, as a teenager. And Ric Flair mentored him a group man evolution. So, all right. Everybody have their disagreements and Rick Flair saying, hey, I want my money. <laughs> Rick Flair said, he don't care. I can admire that, but then sometimes looking like, why are you waiting so long? It's like the statues and limitations are, you know, that, you know, because Big Lynch using the word of man. So, you know, he, and he said he just don't mind. So, right, he was really good. Speaking of that, Eli Drake said that he almost signed with AEW. There was talks from the NWA superstar, recently acquired NWA superstar, that he was going to sign with the company, but talks fell through. So, Eli Drake, hey, who knows? Eli Drake's a you know, phenomenal individual, phenomenal shape, um, stature, and stuff like that. Who wouldn't want Eli Drake on their roster? But, you know, Eli Drake living his own little hot boy summer right here. So, hey. Okay. Uh, Eli Drake. But I can see Eli Drake in AEW. 
I can see him, but who knows down the road? You know, like Drake could be a big star at AEW if the NWA thing don't work out and stuff. They talking about doing it in Atlanta in a small audience and general mission. I want to see how this goes, but I'm, not, I'm skeptical. But we'll see how this all fair plays out. So, speaking of that, two superstars from WWE and AEW have asked for their release and got granted for both. Well, Kylie Ray asked her for her release from AEW for a uh, disclosure health reasons. I don't know why, but Kyler Ray was supposed to be poised to be the next face of the AEW Women's Division. It's unfortunate, but Kyler Ray, we remember, she used to be a student of Booker T's and Booker T's rather wrestling, so our prayers goes to Kyler Ray for anything, you know, for those as well, for her uh, you know, wrestling. Also, Casey Kyler you know, I want to say the girlfriend of Ricochet, she asked for her release and um, the knee was not yet granted, but they understand that Casey was suffering from back issues. And Casey tried one to bow as well. So, hey, at least she got one person, you know, in her household running, you know, making money that they was Ricochet. So, hey, things looking as well for Casey as well. Speaking of that, Dean Malenko. Um, suffered from reveals that he suffered from a disease that he's battling. Um, I forgot what he's battling, but he's battling some disease. Um, some with Michael J. Fox hands. Um, like great right, that. Um, L something I forgot. I don't want to. He's the he's battling disease. So we wish the uh, Iceman Dimenico. You know, hey. You know, she's doing a phenomenal job as senior producer at AEW. So, Dean Malenko with that in mind. Let's go. So, okay. speaking of that, um, NXT to air the two hour show during split time between the hours, where the first hour will air on USA and the second hour will air exclusively on the WWE Network. This is because USA has suits and stuff like that. So NXT getting an hour from USA. It's like diluting the thing. It's like, well, NXT got two hours live. So we're going to dilute it one hour to USA and then another hour to the network. It's like you're killing the purpose. It's like, my well put it back, put it on the network and stuff. Just leave it on the network. <laughs> I'm just saying. But hey, it is what it is. Speaking of that, Scarlett Bordeaux, the smoke show, who's formerly from Impact Wrestling, got released from Impact Wrestling, it was started to do a private training with WWE in the performance center so she can get a train, a train out, a trap. Scarlett, this would be wonders for Scarlett if she do do that. But if it don't work out for WWE, don't pan us out, try eat them. But um, I feel like there's been a raw deal between Scarlett and Killer Cross. That Killer Cross, I mean Killer Cross, Cross, but they wanted to go and ask for the release of Impact. Granted, Scarlett release, but they didn't grant Killer Cross release because there's rumors going on with heat between Killer Cross and Impact, an ongoing situation where Killer Cross didn't want Blade, and Impact management felt like he should have Blade, but the man's trying to make a living and. They trying to not make the man work, but it's just not right. But you know, hey, what, what can you do? What can you say? But um Scarbo, if she beat this trial, she everything goes well, good for her. And Kill Cross, when he got his contract, oh AEW or WWE one or two, who wants you? Who wants you? Um also, um Carmella takes time off from WWE. She's dealing with uh undisclosed injury, so it was Carmella the best and stuff like that. Also, um, RVD extends his contract with Impact. Hey, RVD, you got somebody that's in there that know. I think he's close with Don Callis. So Don Callis pulling the screens of Impact. You yeah, RVD more money. But that's how I'd be sometimes. That's it. That's it. But which, which that's good for RVD. But hey, 
It makes the companies suffer a little bit too. Speaking of that, update on Access TV and Impact Wrestling talks. Like Impact wants me on Access to move away from their, their network, Twister Network Pursuit. And um, that's for weaker network pursuit. Everybody, everybody got pursuit. Uh, <laughs> you got to watch Impact on Twitch. That's the only time you watch Impact if you're a US subscriber. If you don't have like um, pursuit, that's crazy. <laughs> but they want to be on Access, but Access um, is the home of New Japan and Wow. Uh, Impact sent a deal. And it's been slowed down now, so I don't know. Impact might stay on pers- play pursuit for a little longer than they expected. I'm wondering why they didn't get on a huge, like a recognized network, like mm, like Paramount. Like, it used to be on the home where it used to be Spike or WGN America. Some get on one of those two networks. I, if I was them and I was they negotiating, I'd say you need to get on one of these two. Paramount or WGN. Our great chance probably be with WGN. We sell them and stuff like that. But, you know, hey, like, it is what it is. You know how that goes. <laughs> you put yourself in, in the pickle. So, hey. And then also, Impact ain't got that many um, stars either. They don't have a lot of stars on their roster, to be honest with you. Also, um, there's been reports that um, there's going to be a draft coming soon. And then they want to reshuffle the draft and start over and start fresh where they want to have, before they make the move to Fox next month, that they wants to do a draft. So that they wants to draft a couple of superstars. Just like the superstar shakeup we made with four months ago. Now they want to do something to shake things up permanently. Let's see how this lasts and we want to end the wild card. So, you know how they go. You know how they go. Also, um, that's, that's, I'm trying to see anything else happen. Also, um, that is it. And then they want to change the commentary teams too. So, hey, <coughs> you got Mike Cole and they, uh, and Corey Graves on Raw. Byron Saxton, um, um, Todd Phillips, and Corey Graves was right now. The Corey Graves been on both shows, so I think they're trying to look for a replacement. The Corey Graves in the Raw SmackDown. I think Graves should stay on Raw because he's needed on Raw and on SmackDown. I think they should go with JBL. Then that's what they're gonna go with JBL. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. And also, AEW not hiring writers for their weekly TV. So they want to be different and want to do off bullet points and offshoot promo rather than be doing scripts word by word. So, like, the other way it is. Um, also, um, there was another story that JR said something about on his podcast about Triple H and John Cena. About the, the center topic was CM Punk. Triple H John Cena did not want to. They felt like CM Punk, his attributes were a little off. And John said that CM Punk, they wasn't impressed by CM Punk. So until they, CM Punk won them over slowly. So hey, it was kind of weird when, um, John was talking about his, about his, um, his rear, his keister, his rear end. I said, what in the world wrestlers were about wrestling each other's um, butts? Wow. Only in America. Okay. The physiques and all this stuff. Don't matter as long as they got the guy giving gift, the guy giving ability, the guy giving talent to convey audience and story time. That's all story tale. That's all that matters. All right. I was kind of thrown off by that, but hey, each is on. All right. Next week's edition of the of Pro Wrestling Show, we will have the Clash of Champions Predict the Outcome special where we talk about we break down the matches for Clash of Champions, where the championship matches the card itself. You won't want to miss it. But for this week, I've been your host, Kenji Dick, saying so long. We'll see you next time here on Pro Wrestling Show. See you later.